everyone, this is Dawn here with a video to discuss um, something I'm not sure how to put in words, so we'll see how it comes out. This is, um, this. there's a, several videos that I will probably do, um, but this is the only one I'm feeling that the timing is right on at the moment. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, new technologies that are available to us again um, after eons, I don't know, <laughs> a long, long time, but <clears throat> I've been, I've been shown this, I've, I've remembered it, um, since I was a child, but, and I've painted it before, it's come up in a, a few, few times when I've spoken, um, but really didn't understand, other than my memories, which have to do with the, the time when the earth was not like it is now, so I didn't really understand what the point of it all was, I'm still not sure what that is, but I want to, I feel like the timing is really pertinent to discuss this, and I haven't um, heard anybody talking about it, but then again, I don't follow like scientific channels or anything like that. So maybe there are people are talking about it, but this is just a seed idea that I'm sharing here. I invite you to um, follow your own threads and um, uh, explore further if you feel led to do so. But what I want to talk about is um, the, and I might pair this video with uh, images, possibly um, some of my paintings or um, a, a couple of doodles, um, we'll see. But in any case, what I want to talk about <clears throat> is the combination of the um, concept of Trinitarian energy, which is discussed um, a lot when I wrote um, the Sacred Partnership book and Journey, which are um, now free. Um, to access that free, just go to, I'll put the link below, just go to that link and you can access the entire journey and download the book as a part of the journey um, for free if you are following me on this channel. So I invite you to do that. But in that, when I wrote the book, that was about two years ago, um, it's like every question, um, you know, that I asked about sacred partnership and the meaning of the journey, there was a, a reference that, uh, or Jesus would lead me back to this idea of um, harmonic balance and Trinitarian energy. So, um, something that I was quite familiar with because I did, I come from a Christian background, so the idea of trini Trinity and the three, third energy and um, the three as one was something that um, I was already familiar with. And then there are traces of that. When I was in Ireland, I came across that more from the Celtic tradition um, and then uh, began to um, look at it again from many different angles and noticed how in life in general and in nature that is often reflected, that the pattern of the three um, and the interaction. And then about, I think it was about a year ago, or I'll try to link to this as well, I did a video on the three star system. I think that was after I went out to that trip out west, but in any case, um, uh, I was very connected into um, uh, Sirius and the and three star system and Sirius and you know kind of star system, um, and I think I mentioned in that video the replication of um, of that within, um, and but that is really has really been present the last <clears throat> six months or so. This trinitarian energy, my awareness of it has been. Um, I've consistently been brought back to that concept um, as a, just an overarching concept. And so getting back to the idea of technologies um, that I wanted to speak about, um, well first, the reason I'm doing this video is because about four or five times in the last three or four weeks, roughly, um, I've had experiences um, you could call them dreams, but they're not really dreams, but they're also not like waking visions. I don't know exactly how to, what to call this. It's not like live beings I can touch, but let's just say visitations or spirit guardians. Um, and all four times that this has happened, they've come in threes. And in um, the most uh, meaningful to me personally um, time it happened, it was actually three members of the same family in my larger um, family uh, lineage and these three individuals who uh, unlikely that they would have uh, come to me in real life um, together but in any case they all showed up and were um, sharing their energetic frequency more than conveying information um, and 
they were appeared as they appeared in life, but they were in sort of like, um, instead of, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm struggling with how to, how to put this in. Okay. So they appeared as they appeared in life and particularly like the way I knew it was them. Like I heard the laughter of one of them and then words from another one. And then the demeanor of the third person and they were right there together. And it was like, they were one energy, but appearing as three beings. And they physically had characteristics reminiscent of real life, how they appeared in real life. And yet there was a distinct flavor that was very strong and beautiful and much more um, about their star seed lineage than about their human journey. Um, and interestingly, in this one incident of the four that I'm talking about right now, the three um, who were in the same uh, family, one was, uh, one was a Pleiadian energy which I, I don't have a lot of necessarily connection to myself, although I know it's really, really common at this time. One was Arturian um, energy, which I very much resonate with the concepts um, that are associated with Arturians and their technologies. Um, and then the third um, was, I don't know, <laughs> but like it seemed much more um, familiar to me, but not quite um, Syrian, which is the lineage that I would necessarily be drawn to, typically, even though I don't know what my own heritage is. I don't, I don't know that that really matters. I've always said, like, what's the point of that? It's like replicating what we have here on Earth. But um, that being said, my point is here in sharing this with you is that they were three very distinct s star energies, but they were one, and they had come, they came as one and it was so beautiful and they were sharing this particular combination of their energetic frequency more so again than information which is typically in the past when i've had these kind of encounters have been more about the information and um a sort of a download and or a, a conveying of a transference of information this was not that this was a, a an attunement i would say and it was very important, the harm, harmonics and harmony that was happening between the three. And when, uh, when after this was over, I was awake actually when it was happening, but uh, after this was passed, I was really reflecting on all of those times when Jesus was always bringing my attention back to this um, Trinitarian flow. Um, you know, initially in terms of my questions regarding the, the, the twin flame and or sacred partnership path um, and that energy and what was happening and what was the point of it all. And then other times when he has, you know, most definitively shown me that in terms of the, the imperative of us collectively and individually uh, keeping the... Um, the, the balance and the tuning um and the channels open so that so that there could be the ele um, elevation the elevation that was necessary for full expansion i'm sorry i'm having really trouble with the words here but um so um so all of these various um various uh, references or nods to this Trinitarian energy have been really, really powerful of late. I've even been like, in creatively, I've been working on my um, Soul of Ireland, Trees of Ireland collections of, of photographs. And it's like, every time I look, it's like, oh, there are three trees. Oh, there's like the, the shamrock. Oh, there are uh, three rivers coming together. It, it's just kind of, <laughs> it's like you can't ignore it, you know? And, um, and even I was like cleaning out my... Um, he was cleaning out some old files and there were all of these references in the file names, random things, to three. And and so anyway, you cannot avoid it. And so um, back to, um, so the image of the Trinitarian um, energy has been really powerful. The the four, um, four uh, vision-like um, experiences that I've had all had to do with threes. I'm not going to go into the other ones because they're too detailed. Um, it would be it would take me a while to even speak it. it it's uh, that's the other thing. What's been happening with me lately is not like it's not easily translatable. Okay, so Trinitarian energy. The other thing that's been huge um, is is 
um, the application of light, light energy, light qualities of light, the play of light, which I've long talked about, but the tie-in of light to the, the Trinitarian um, confluence um, and exchange of energy. And this three-star system that I mentioned before, how that is like internal and external, and, and those two are always um, interacting and coming together. And there's always, even, okay, so see, those are two Trinitarian systems, and there's always a third that is coming in, and there's, um, there's a, what is the word, when it's just in, in constant flux in a beautiful um, orchestration um, of the light and of the energy. And somehow this is tied in, I, I haven't quite put this together, um, but you know, I got the nod just to go ahead and, and, and speak this in a video and we will translate later. But um, in any case, there's right now um, in our world this, uh, this thing going on. I have a feeling it has to do with um, the, what have, what we often label um, as the, um, you know, good and bad or light and dark or all of those, um, those sorts of polarizing terms and um, the balancing of those, but beyond the balancing of those, the, the third flow of light that is then kind of almost like, okay, it's like a harmonic convergence that then is birthing new world, new experiences, new understandings of the three in one that will then be further emanated out and ultimately come back together. Um, and it's just, again, it goes back to this idea of spectrum and, and perspectives um, that I've talked about a lot in the last, you know, four or five months in various places. And so the, this light and the exchange of energy and the quality of light and the, the play and then also the other thing that's been, I've been doing my All Systems Go video series as part of my, my daily videos that I do. Um, and I've been, I haven't even talked about this that yet there, but I, every time I do one, I'm like, oh wow, I totally get how this system, there's 24 life systems, how this system is related to these other two systems in the other system sets and at the very end of my book all systems go I talk about triads but I, I remember when I was putting them in the books I'm like why are we doing this like <laughs> but I just go with it because I've learned you know like to follow follow what I'm given to share and you know the idea there was that there are um, there are three system sets and we were pulling one from each and pairing them together and the the uh, concept there was that they are working together and it's like a kaleidoscope and you look into the lens and you see the three are always moving. So I've been realizing, like, I haven't even been speaking this in, uh, yet because I'm, we're just going through the main um, systems, but I've been like totally aware of that. Every time I'm talking, I'm like, oh yes, this is, you know, this one is paired with this. And, and I can see in, you know, as I'm, you know, conveying the, the basic information, I can see and feel, more importantly, feel, the um, way that the interplay of those three systems, the energetic interplay of those three perspectives, three energetic perspectives, which is uh, my coloring book is called uh, Energetic Perspectives, and it's you know kind of a series of soul activations. The interplay of those three in the triad of the systems, it's not necessarily about the three fitting together. It's about what is created from the three in one, which is more than just what often we think about, oh, it is, we, we lean toward either looking at that as the Trinitarian system, which is the one, or as the three aspects of the Trinitarian system, which is the three, or individual, so individual, or then uh, one cohesive, unified field or unit. But what I'm being shown is that it is actually a completely dynamic situation, and it is about the, the, dynamic flow of the light and of the energy and the interchange it's about that and that is the very nature of life and 
So it's a Trinitarian flow, but it's something that cannot be defined so easily. It's not just simply the exchange between the, the players, and it's not just what is created from um, that uh, sphere, spherical system. Uh, it's, it's rather an ever-changing array of infinite perspectives um, that creates the spectrum which we are accustomed to, you know, the rainbow lights, um, you know, Roy G. Biv, um, what is that, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, <laughs> um, but it's more, it's much more than that. It's much more even than ultraviolet and infrared, which brings me to the healing technology. So um, for a long, long, long time, since I was a very little girl, actually, I used to see I used to see this one scene over and over again, and I've painted it a couple times, and then the one time I did talk about it, um, hmm, I, I think it was about four years ago in a small group I was in, and somebody contacted me and said, you you know what that's from, don't you? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, of course not, like, because I just kind of just blurted out this, um, like I often do this thing about the healing chamber, and once upon a time when you know, it's like maybe it's a novel, but somebody went to the healing chamber and then this happened, this happened. And um, and they're like, no, no, Dawn, that was real. And um, and um, I was like, oh, that's why it's always felt so like real. And I, I could never quite, I was never comfortable with just seeing it as the past, as in something that happened when blah, 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 you were dropped into a civilization that they didn't know you or whatever. Like, I don't know, <laughs> when did that happen? I don't know. But that's, you know what, uh, it, it felt kind of resonant because that was the picture that I always had. And it was like, together, um, uh, the, the um, there was no language, there was no language uh, connection. And so uh, together we were able to, um, the people um, who were at the land and then this, this the stranger that was dropped in their midst were able to bring together um, the pieces of what they knew to create a sacred space um, which then was where the light somehow was channeled into this mountain and into the healing chamber and it is uh, during a time of great destruction on the earth it is what um, led to Restoration. That's what, often when I talk about, you know, rest is at the, at the heart of restoration. There's uh, that's the imagery that I always often have, and so that feels like the past, right? And the ancient wisdom or some real or imagined uh, uh, lineage uh, or you know some lost technology, and then other times. I have thought of it more as futuristic, right? Like, oh yeah, that's when we will understand the true nature of light. And I remember when I was doing the, the play of light um, uh, emails, I used to do a little daily e email series that I abandoned because, you know, nobody but me was reading them. But, um, but uh, when I was exploring that, uh, I was talking about the nature of light and I would just you know, kind of receive these uh, insights about light and the nature of light. And it would be phenomenal to me how many of them seem to be foreshadowing a future whereby all of these things that we have created all these man-made solutions to uh, would be returned to a simplicity um, of streaming light um, and not artificial light but natural light that was harnessed um, and also supplied in greater potency. And this was like, when I used to think of these future things, this is like way before I knew what the Schumann residence was or what, what, what I was not aware of, you know, the whole idea of vibration and frequency was something that wouldn't have been in my understanding in terms of my, my physical human understanding, but I think my soul always understood. And so what I'm saying is, so then I would, I would those, in those times I would be, getting these glimpses of a future whereby um, we all were naturally understanding the healing nature of light. So in both the past uh, images of that and the future images of that, there's the common thread of the healing nature of light, sacred space, and the fact that there are um, there is the creation of a new way forward 
um, that does not require uh, massive uh, uh, transference of information, and it does not require even the bridge of understanding in terms of how we have achieved that before through a common language or a uh, common understanding or a common reference from an external source. Which brings me to the fact that when I th have thought about the, you know, the past vision and the future vision, like for me, it always felt incomplete. And this brought me back to recently, to the, after this visitation thing that with the three, um, three beings and, and the three other experiences, brought me back to the three star system idea. And what I just kind of mentioned in passing when I did that audio, which was that, you know, there's something internal about the three star system. And what really has been present for me is that while the, that past image or the healing technology and the future image, you know, it seemed true and yet it also seemed incomplete. And that's because there, there is always, there is always a third reference point that typically when we th thought of the Trinity or Trinitarian energy, we always think of that as external to the two. Um, and we think of it either as being created from the two, from the two um, or as um, uh, the third being elevated. Um, so God, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, um, and, and our human way of understanding that, even though, you know, in Trinitarian, um, in, in theology, you know, they're, they're, um, they're, they're one and the same, right? They're like the same, just different forms. And and yet, what I want to say here is like the interior-exterior dynamic, it's almost like a false dichotomy. Um, and it's almost like we have limited the, um, the potency of and the possibility of what can be in our present moment experienced by the splintering of that into you know, the ways that we've always defined things or understood things. Um, and, and I'm not sure this is like even making any sense whatsoever, but what I'm trying to say here is that this, um, this image of the healing chambers um, and the light technology and, you know, certain, um, certain things that are coming to light um, in terms of um, whoops, um, be still computer, um, and the certain things that are coming to light in terms of freedom, truth, uh, revelation of the mystery, the exposure, disclosure, all of that is going to, to be an opening to a way forward that that is no longer we're no longer confined or enslaved or fixed or stuck in one way of seeing something being something understanding something as free but rather we will enter into present potential energetic container which itself is the healing chamber so rather than it being a physical manifestation although I think this will come again uh, and we'll circle back to ancient technologies and I think all those are valid equally valid the past and future um, and yet it's here now and when we return to an internal reference point and allow an opening within, in other words, create that sacred chamber within, and allow within that chamber for the dynamic flow of a Trinitarian light, we enter into and live within the sphere of healing and of the, the 
rainbow light, but far more than what we have understood the rainbow light to be, and expand radiantly from within. And so this whole idea of the three star system um, and of the healing chamber and of the seed, if you okay, think of the apple seed, you know, the apple, you slice an apple and you see the sleeve, the seed pattern there. Okay, so think of that, but in a dynamic, uh, again, I've described this before in terms of like things moving out and in and on, a, on an axis, rotating at the same time, and then there being many, many reconfigurations within that happening um, that also creates a um, spin, I guess you call it, or a field of motion, or what, or I don't know what you would call it, but um, it, it creates the, uh, and then it becomes it it becomes a creation force. Force is not the right word. A creation. Mm, energy, but that's not the right word either. But it becomes it becomes something that from which uh, life is always flowing forth. And this, to me, is somehow connected to every idea that to to date that that um, when we have talked about the fountain of youth, eternal love. Um, infinite potential the all of those sorts of things we've we've often seen those as even though we use words like infinite everlasting uh you know ever flowing fountain we we think of that as you know not being extinguished or not being um not being used up so there's an infinite supply and still, we have limited that. It's, so Jesus would say it hasn't been harmonic enough. Um, and um, there's something to there about the um, all, uh, so even the, the limitations of the way we have seen a spectrum of color, the way we have seen a scale of notes, the way we have seen a, you know, progression of, um, you know, our sequences, uh, like from from nature even, say from the Fibonacci sequence or, you know, whatever other scientific um, ways of seeing things, uh, constellations, um, all of that. Um, and this all ties into the idea of transfiguration as well. And that, um, that was something that was so present for me, um, I think that was about a year ago, roughly, um, this idea of reconfiguration, transfiguration kept coming up for me. And now, I can totally see how that has been occurring in my own life and in, in, I can see it reflected in, in the journeys of um, people around me. And this is connected also with this me the messages that uh, when, when I've had more of um, uh, these experiences where there have been more um, messages that I understand beyond the energy, they have all been related to this idea of um, transfiguration of um, of a, um, a reset and a reconfiguration yes but in um, an ex a quantum expansion expansion uh, that is beyond it requires an entire like whole new framework for for understanding which clearly I have not gained yet but I I did feel it was important to share this and so Last thing is that um, I have always um, been drawn to the um, uh, Native American traditions that have to do with the way that the way that they talk so beautifully about Great Spirit um, and Mother Earth and Father Sky. And the last image I want to leave with you is something that's really dear to to me and just really resonates for me because um, a, a portion of you know kind of my um, I guess you would call it mission or my what I have seen as, as my role would be, has been at times to just be a follow you know the call to a particular location usually I have no idea why 
um, and or you know just like wake up in the morning when, especially when I lived in Ireland or traveled in, in France like it was like this I would wake up in the morning and I'd have my little itinerary my plan and literally it would be nope turn left <laughs> and then I would I would turn left and drive four hours and end up at this you know megalithic site that wasn't even on the radar or whatever and uh, or wasn't at least um, on the map or publicized and um, and then I would later so I would just be there and it would be awesome and amazing and then later I'd like realize um, the historical significance uh, or maybe not um, sometimes you know it wouldn't be that but I would just know like there was a, a connection to the earth in that in that spot and you know whatever was happening I, I do not know because I don't actually do any kind of um, it's, it's not like voodoo it's like definitely not like I don't do I know some people you know I, I love this I would kind of wish I had you know sort of an understanding of like oh I'm gonna activate the energy portal or whatever I, I don't know I just go and but when I've done that I've always had such a connection with the earth and, and seen her very much as a mother I remember when I was like 12 um, one Halloween I got super mocked because I was like I just want to be mother nature and so I dressed up in like this flowing gown and you know like throw, showed up at the um, the uh, the uh, I think it was at a church the um, little costume thing and yeah people are like, what are you? <laughs> but I love the earth. And so this um, connection with nature and earth, in addition to the connection with the heavens and the sky and the, the vastness of the eternal, these are two, could be seen as two, you know, opposites, but these are, are two. And then there is you. There is great spirit. There is the entering into a place where that is held in unity and it's the entering into that is the important part it's not just about acknowledging the two or even acknowledging the two and then uh, looking to great spirit uh, but it's it is an entering into um, a creation with the elements yes the earth yes the, the sky yes the comfort um, of the clouds and the sky and the vastness of that protection and the um, beauty of the earth and the ground beneath us and it is about being held and it is about trust in you know God spirit truth life light, love, but more than that, it is an entering into and a willingness to surrender the need for control, to be engaged in, to become a part of the flow of life, to step into being a play of light without a preconceived notion of where that's going, um, a willingness to be a revolution of love that is an ever revolving dynamic and sustainable system that doesn't need to attach that grace-filled revolution to any outcome in time or space or any purpose or any linear trajectory but rather to be, to become, to shine forth, and to enter into the dance of life, to allow the rest and restoration within the sacred chamber of the body of the earth, of being a soul on the way to allow that to be an entering into the ever-changing trinity of light and life and love and to be a part of the generations of possibility I talked about in that, that previous video and to allow for the regeneration of 
life as we have understood it to date by giving gratitude for the generations, the generations, the literal generations that have gone before, the literal generations that will come after, the literal generating system that we are, the generations of Oh, how do you say that? <laughs> the, the generations of um, really like civilizations um, and combinations of stories, of cultures, of lineages, physical human lineages, star lineages, spiritual lineages, all of it. See, here's the thing. It's way, way, way more an exciting ride than we have ever let it be. Like, ever. Like, it's so amazing. And, you know, it's, it's like a bit of a, um, what is it called? Like, um, like jarring to one's um, experience when you know like how amazing it is and and yet you know here we are <laughs> in global pandemic 2020 with lots more as i've spoken about lots more of these uh waves to come um and it may not have uh been publicized to the masses yet but those waves are um they're they're rolling in and and yet that, I want to be clear here, like this is what I want to be sure and say, that may be what is uh, now happening, what will continue to happen. And it's it's interesting to watch, you know, the unfortunately the fear that grips so many people around that. But I, I spoke about the opportunity to be the calm and the chaos. And so, so it can be jarring, like if you, if you, focus too much on that story that's playing out, that paradigm, that system of belief, that, uh, that framework of our current systems and our humanity and our society. And I am very passionate, as you kind of know, like about talking about society and the restructuring of society and systems and organizations and structures that support a new society. I'm incredibly passionate about that. And yet, what I've been shown is like that it's important to, and it's a part of, you know, my work to, to speak to that. And yet, oh my gosh, it's so magical and amazing. And the, the technology, it, it's a constant co-creation um, that is being eternally sourced for us and within us and through us and by us at times. And, uh, we are, you know, we are a part of that creation, that regeneration, and we are being replenished. Um, and we can, in any moment of time, step into that sacred chamber of healing. Because you could think of it in terms, most of you have probably heard of, you know, like the Merkaba and the, um, the, uh, you can think of it in that way, and the energetic structure in which we're, you know, going around, or, um, you know, your uh, the the layers of, of your your being, um, and you can also think of it through the lens of um, time and moving through time, and you can think of it through space, and you can think of it, um, you know, on a more um, human journey level in terms of the um the as ascension journey that necessarily requires an embodiment and that's where a lot i think of people who who spoke about this early on it never resonated for me and i didn't really i couldn't really put my finger on it but i think that's what it was is like no we're not just climbing a ladder in you know, going up to heaven, like, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is life. The point is life and the living of it. 
the point is to yes to live in full expression as I talk about but it's 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 not just about us living in full expression it's not just about allowing for everyone to live in full expression it is being the full expression and that is an unknown quantity many times and when we step into the sacred chamber and immerse ourselves in the healing light that we ourselves are a reflection of and a an aspect of a um, a particular um, emanation of you know along a, a particular expression that has a unique quality of light and yet we know that that is merely one um, it's merely one reflection at one point in one time in one space looked at from one point of view or perspective um, and that even that even being that light that we are is is a fraction of the fullness of life because the fullness of life is incomprehensible and it is that ever um, ever dynamic exchange of frequencies and an energetic uh, perspectives it's like a bubbling up it's like you know have you ever watched a clear mountain stream and the bubbles that just come in like you know, you can watch it forever all day and the, the quality of the bubbles is always changing because the light is always changing and the way that you're looking at it is always changing and the river flow itself is always changing and those three things are constantly, they are themselves in, you know, in a dynamic flow and the interchange of them and it's just so delightful, delightful, beautiful, amazing, playful. And so the more and more that we can we can enter into the, with a spirit of curiosity and play, enter into um, a um, an, a um, <laughs> sorry. The more that we can enter into what was I saying? Enter into oh yeah yeah the dynamic um, flow of this and and just dance with it. Dance with life not just your life not just life not just the people that you happen to be around but just life and there's more and more and more and more life so that's what i wanted to share is a little jumbled per usual when i get on these topics um i have some more things that i want to um share with you but this was what i wanted to share for today and just this whole idea of the um the healing the sacred healing chambers the light technologies, the three star system within you, the dynamic interplay of all of it, you know, Mother Earth, Father Sky, Great Spirit, Light, Life, Love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three star system from in a galaxy far far away and from the galaxy within your heart your soul and I mean look how amazing this is uh, just look this journey is like so amazing it's so so beautiful so I will um, be back with a couple more um, videos I, um, I I went to um, delete some of the videos and I realized oh I, I already made them private a year ago I forgot so um, all of the things I did early on which was really about um, uh, I call them messages to the masculine and um, it was about awakening um, or speaking um, a remember a call to remembrance um, those are now archived and, and not available for public view but I, I did leave um, I think there were 88 videos that I left um, public and I put them all on the on the way playlist um, yeah they were just my journey just to realize that um, because we are always in an ever-changing flow of life and because there's always life 
and life to the full that is fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller than we could ever imagine. Just remember that's just like all those videos are just one point in time, as is this, as is this. And, um, and my joy in this life on this journey is to be on the way. Um, I, uh, again, the sacred partnership journey is free. I anticipate doing some uh, more videos um, related to that material because I haven't shared it publicly from the book um, in particular. And then I'll add that to the journey so it'll be there and you have lifetime access as long as um, as long as that platform um, remains available to me. I have to, you know, to fund that is a couple thousand dollars out of my pocket, um, which doesn't sound like much, but given that I'm homeless, and I don't, I mean, I'm fine, but you know, like I, it's not important to me. Um, but my point is I, I can't guarantee that it'll always be there. I hope to, that it will always be available. Um, and I'm working on some ways to support that. If you, uh, you know, feel called to get um, a soul gifts map. You can look at my website um, for those, um, or if I can help you, you know, with your book or any content um, project, I, I do that as well. Um, or you can um, check out some of my uh, Trees of Ireland um, photographs or other things if you'd like to support um, the continuation of this work. I hope to do so. Um, I had debated about, I really kind of wanted to change the name of the channel because to freshen up the energy because my, um, you know, I've made some choices and decisions and, and um, I don't anticipate um, those shifting. And so it felt like the name of the, the channel maybe needed to change, but I was kind of guided just to leave it for now. Um, so I'll do that, um, and I will be back with some more soul shares around the Sacred Partnership book at some point, and a couple other videos related to some threads that I am bringing together in my own journey uh, right now. So that this is what I wanted to share today, just these various images. I know it was like a little bit of ping-pongy, just thoughts and ideas. I hope that there's been something there that has connected for you. Lots of love, and um, oh yeah, one more thing this week. Um, this, uh, this is Wednesday, I think. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I lose track of days. It's Wednesday. So, um, this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, I think I've seen lots of, um, titles anyway of videos and where people are picking up on the energies. And I guess there's like a big, uh, full moon, I guess, or is it new moon or full moon? Full moon, I think. Um, and uh, something to do with Scorpio, but anyway. Oh yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Oh yeah, 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 death and rebirth. And what I was gonna say is um, let it let it go, surrender to the flow of life and its ever evolving nature and its re the, the potential for regeneration, um, particularly through, as we move through this weekend. So, all right, see you later, bye, thanks.